it's exciting that we've got people here. We've come out to the party. And I think Barbara's gonna give us a really great lecture. We're gonna learn a lot of stuff about Japanese shifu and what can, can be done with paper. But before I start with Barbara, I'd like to introduce everybody to Etsko. Oh, if you'd stand up, please. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hello. Etsko is it's in cool. the in the area doing a um, residency with an old Ahern and Violet Loom down in Point Arena. Oh, and uh -huh. but but more important, Etsko was born in Japan and graduated from the University of Tokyo and came to the United States to the Seattle, Washington area to study glass blowing with Yahoo. Mm -hmm. She spent many years there, and it has evolved from just making things to taking. Uh, she did does film work. That's what she's doing now. But she does. She takes the long pipe that we're all used to seeing with the big blob of glass on it, and lets the glass kind of trail out like a snake, and moves it beautifully over long pieces of paper, oh, wow. and scorches the design into the paper without wow. burning it. And it's like the trails of snakes and things. It's oh. Phenomenal. Why she's decided to weave, I'm not really sure. You'll have to ask her that one. But anyway, her history in art is phenomenal. So to get a chance to chat with her, she's amazing. And her website is terrific. Say her name again. Let's go. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ishikawa? My pleasure, my pleasure. You're on, Barbara. Um, Barbara comes to us from a long history of all kinds of cool things, one of which is working at the Beyond. Oh. And so that kind of pushes her way up there for me. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, I took a workshop with Barbara a couple of years ago in Shifu and spinning paper and I spun this really great little wad of stuff and that's the end of it. <laughs> uh, it, it takes great um, finger control and I never knew what I was going to do with it afterwards because anybody who knows me knows I weave huge things and I was never going to spin enough paper to do any of those. So Barbara, you're on. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are we all feeling like Barbara might be safe to take her mask off because it's hard to? Yes. Yes. Hear. I, yes. yes. I'm yes. I'm vaccinated totally. I think I'm up to five now. Yeah. <laughs> I forget what the numbers are. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, and I'm good and I haven't had COVID and haven't been uh, uh next to people who have had COVID. So. Um, Hopefully, I'm good. So, <laughs> it's so it's uh, wonderful to be from us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll uh, I'll stay back here. <laughs> um, so it's great to see everybody and see faces that I know, um, and to be able to talk to you about something that um, I am far, far from an expert on. Um, I learned how to do Shifu at um, CNCH uh, Silomar 2017. I took a, one of the workshops with Donna Christian. <clears throat> and um, I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. I, I like to do weaving that I enjoy, that's, that's fun for me, and that I can learn something in. And um, um, actually, when I started, my grandmother wove. After World War II, she decided she wanted to learn to weave. So she drove from Mountain View to San Jose to take weaving classes. And I had her loom. My mother picked up weaving after she started stopped teaching. And um, they were both members of um, Glenna Harris. Mm -hmm. Glenna Harris in San Jose. Um, so <laughs> while I grew up knowing what a loom was and in my grandmother's uh, back room, you could open up cupboards and there was yarn. So uh, that's like in my DNA, I know that, but I never wove at that time. Um, um, but always grew up, we did everything. We, If macrame was in, we learned how to do macrame at home. And if knitting was in, we learned how to do knitting, which is not something I've carried on. I'm not very good at that. Um, but just, 
you know, just play and do mm -hmm. things and recycle and reuse. And that was just part of my my upbringing. Um, and as a matter of fact, my mother made me a rigid head old loom, popsicle sticks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. that's how you and Ira. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so that's what yeah. my first weavings were on, and um, uh, which was fun. And I lived in Pennsylvania after I got married for a while, and we moved back out here, um, 76, 77. And um, um, at that time, and I taught school, first and second grade. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, California schools were laying off teachers like crazy, just okay. all out. And um, I could have gotten a job at, um, minimum wage, which was like $5 an hour at that time, uh, teaching school. And I thought, you know, <laughs> teaching school is a lot of work and $5 an hour isn't very much. Uh, so I was lucky. We lived in San Francisco and I went to Fort Mason. So my um, my first weaving teachers were there and Kay Sakamachi yeah. taught yeah. there at that time. Mm -hmm. I, I still can't believe that she taught. Uh, it was adult ed education at yeah. that time and um uh i think i'm the only person who read the information and it said you had to have as a prerequisite to get into k's class some other weaving class so that essentially you knew how to warp mm -hmm. and things like that and and i think i'm the only person that from my class that i actually did take another class in order to learn that. <laughs> and I just wanted to be on the floor loom. Oh, this is fabulous. And I had lots of fun and I learned a lot from Kay and I still see her. Um, um, and then I, um, um, Martha Stanley taught at, uh, at Fort Mason. And the first year we all did rugs. It was a fabulous class. The second year that she taught, there was such a demand that some of us couldn't um, couldn't get looms, but we convinced Martha that she could do a class after after she'd done her instruction, and we would do off loom things. So we learned, and this was just perfect for me. Off loom, I love off loom. Uh, um, sling braids, you know, you hold them in your hands. Sling yeah. braids, saha. We learned all these other things, and it was fabulous, and. That is when my my weaving journey kind of went backwards technology wise. That uh, I do still have a loom. I have two two looms actually, and they're both used as kind of frames that things hang over, so that um, so that um, like like my my big one here. Um, uh, I have a board, which I could pin into, which is hung over the back. This is how I use my technology. <laughs> but but Shifu has been a lot of fun for me. I I think at CNCH, it was a day and a half or two day, two day workshop, I could think it was. And we um, had a lot of fun playing with uh, different kinds of paper. Donna brought uh, all kinds of paper to use. There were a couple of people who brought spinning wheels, which boy, that was like, I put, try and put uh, paper on it and it just done nothing. Yeah, just <laughs> okay. like this. Uh, we tried it with uh, um, 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 drop spindles, uh, which I could do a little bit of. I'm, I'm not a real great spinner. I haven't, it's not something that I want to make my major use of time out of. We also used um, mostly um, bobbin winders and oh, not electric, <laughs> but a uh, bobbin winder. So you, you, yeah. it's like spinning yeah. on a great wheel, isn't it? Just and off the, off the points, which worked pretty well. Um, and um, so I was, um, I was interested and I liked spinning. I really liked spinning pattern tissue paper. And um, uh, and I spun some and tried all kinds of things. Some things that um, I, you'll be able to see afterwards. You know, like this is the um, the flyer from Cole Hardware 
which I will never, this is, you know, this is it. I'm never spending that one again. It, uh, some things just don't work at all, uh, but it's fun to try. Um, but my love is still um, uh, the um, uh, pattern paper. Um, Oh, oh, yeah. Tissue, yeah. yeah. The, um, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, pattern yeah. paper, yeah. yeah. It's a big piece. Sometimes they're uh, they're really small. Um, so yeah. Um, let me. Um, so he, there's a roll of fabric that would cover that window to get it dark if necessary, or possibly just drop the line. Well, the blind thing is here. Move this over so that I can. Oh, there we go. Move, uh, move through. Um, so, Bifu and Kami Ito. Um, the class, when I took the class, the only word we used, learned was Shifu. And I always thought, well, Shifu, it's the, it's the making of the yarn. And I may be wrong, and we have a Japanese person who may be able to answer that, I don't know. Um, but um, Shifu is... Um, there we go. Um, is um, do we want the workshop? Or yes. Will there still be ambient light? Uh, oh yeah, I guess the lights could. Yeah. Well, that helps that. Yeah. A little yeah, better. Yeah. Okay. So shifu is cloth made from um, spun paper, and spinning is actually, I guess, for any of you who are spinners, um, it's really twisted because it's not drafted like you would draft something else so I, but everybody uses the word spinning so um 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 i think most things that i've read about um the shifu has been used as weft um it can be used as warp uh i guess if you spin strong enough uh and and it could be plied i i don't ply mine but um um Traditionally, it's woven. The old things were um, in Japan were woven. Uh, and but boy, artists! I I did a Google search on shifu. I I learned a lot for this to give this talk because um, there I tried some new methods and uh, and I did a lot of searching. And there are some people using paper, spun paper doing beautiful things. I'm going to show you some pictures of that. Um, paper making, the, the history of Shifu isn't really known exactly when things happened, but paper was brought to Japan in the early 17th century. And this is with Buddhist monks and for writing um, on sutras. And um, when, when it became used and spun cut the paper cut and spun for for uh thread isn't exactly sure there are references in 17th early 17th century uh, uh to shifu but that's that's just when it's been recorded more so someplace in there someone uh someone used paper and most likely since the paper would have been used for religious purposes or for government work um, and records um, um, the recycled paper when the say um i have a, a book like this with the some kind of records and actually i don't even know if this is um Japanese or Chinese, but it was given to me. Um, but um, so paper like this would be recycled. Um, and uh, until, until, no, I, again, I, I, dates aren't really known. Paper, paper was easy to, easy to acquire i guess and make in japan because the the all the raw materials were there the mulberry and uh uh wisteria and things like that and the common people were used to using those things for for clothing um so so 
I, what I've read is that there were really two kinds of chifu, and one was maybe larger threads, sometimes used paper wrapped around wisteria or as weft for work bows or um, um, warmer clothing, and then really fine threads, chifu threads from good paper. <laughs> and um, uh, samurai things, and, and actually there was a point where samurai were asked, were told to use chifu garments, but that beautifully done um, threads. Um, Kameito is the, and I'm, um, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing these words right. Um, uh, kami is paper and ito is thread, so thread made from paper um, in Japan traditionally. Uh, washi is washi is the word for Japanese paper as opposed to Western paper, and it's stronger. Paper was made specifically for shifu, which meant that it had a really strong grain and it held together, unlike say pattern paper, which is not made for uh, for being wet. Um, so traditional, um, these are just a few pictures of things that were were made um, um, like an undershirt kind of a thing, but would hold the kimono away from the body. And uh, what the construction was? Um, it's kind of like braided and braiding and knotting together. Um, um, so uh, yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah. But but um, this one seems to be braided. The 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 short areas in between are look are braided as opposed to just oh just um, so thread. thread. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is it does look like a lot of work. <laughs> um, and this is. Uh, an under kimono, uh, kozo paper, oh. and then dyed. Um, uh, it looks like uh, looks like to me that the whole garment was the thread may have been dyed ahead, but it looks like the whole garment was dyed. Thought so they were both woven. Yeah, uh -huh. this yes. is, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Um, and, and here's another. Is, is from uh, kozo is. Paper mulberry. That's what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, and this one is um it's actually a photo from uh from one of the books. Um the weft is wrapped around a thin wisteria uh, fiber, um thread made from wisteria uh bark, uh or inner bark, and um and then the, the paper would be spun and then wrapped around it. And uh, so it, it's a little thicker and it gives a different warp. Yeah, yeah. But if you have, if you don't have cotton and a lot of Japan did not have cotton for a long while and in the North they couldn't grow it when seeds finally came, um, uh, you <coughs> used, bass fibers and tree fibers and um, uh, adding paper to it, especially if it, you could get recycled paper, uh, it was warmer. And did it soften? It softened the yeah, the it's, paper softened. The paper and... softened and I've also read that um, when it got, when it got wet, because this is not tissue paper that falls apart, when it got wet, the paper swells a bit mm -hmm. and holds the um heat in. yeah holds the heat in and then dries differently than than a, a cotton mm -hmm. yeah so good work clothes and uh have you felt some of these barber no are you? i oh, haven't i have uh, um you know i have what i have done and otherwise i've only seen pictures okay. yeah i wish i had but uh mm -hmm. no you'd want to see what they how uh, flexible yeah. they were and but um and we have one from Korea in our classes, which I will go find and learn down this afternoon. And 
woven or uh, woven. woven. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I I encountered silk paper in Uzbekistan garments, um, and they were kind of stiff, but um, they were. I I I saw them. They were actually in a paper mill. Oh, but they made it. Uh, made it. Um, uh, paper was the paper then cut and spun, or was it used as as paper? It was used as paper. Okay, as whole whole teeth, yeah. or pieces of whole teeth. The the oh, pattern pieces were cut uh -huh. out of the actual paper. Right. So, so interesting. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. So, um. So you can see the different steps. Here's the the old account book or or whatever it is, and cutting into strips and uh, softening it a little bit, and then here wrapped around uh, another thread, uh, wisteria in this, but beautiful. I mean, this is the one of the things I think is so beautiful is that the the colors and dots of of um, uh, a pattern almost from the from the paper from the writing on the paper and although i don't do it there's no reason that when you take your piece of paper that you can't use markers paint whatever and and paint mm -hmm. on it yeah maybe not so much yeah, maybe markers on on uh pattern paper uh it's so delicate you have to be careful about what you do bob do i have a question sure um, do you know, did they actually have like a spinning wheel or some kind of machine that actually spun this stuff or were they doing yeah. all this by hand? No, no. no. I mean, all the, 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 in the preparation of your paper, spinning it to give the last twist is probably the fastest the shortest part of your whole preparation. But yes, a Japanese spinning wheel and um, you can uh, spin spindle in this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and with a spindle and spun off the off the point. Off mm -hmm. the point, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. That thing is like more mechanized. I mean, that's a lot of thread to make up. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, that's... <laughs> well, that's how they spin silk. I mean, they, in a lot of places, they use a hand cranked yeah, um, like a charka. Yeah, uh -huh. and and just spin off the point yeah. with silk. Yeah, yeah. no, lots nothing more than that. This is not a fast thing, and you can see my supply of here's here's what I have now. Today. Uh, but it, it's fun because like you can have there are a number of steps, and you can have paper a little at a time in each step, and have something always moving along. Um, Okay, and a travel jacket, which is spun um, mm -hmm. and woven and dyed. But the warps on these are something else? Um, I, in the photos that I have, um, it's not always specified, but yet mostly, yes, the warps are something else. I mean, um, it might be, might be wisteria, it yeah. might be um, um, for... Um, Summer eye garments and fi with fine shifu uh, silk. It might be silk. Um, when cotton was available, it might be cotton. Uh, but mostly, mostly, yes, yeah, something else. Mm -hmm. Do they have flax in Japan? No, but they no. have hemp. Hemp and, and rainy. Yeah. yeah. Hemp oh, and rainy. And then, yeah. uh, you know, fibers from, um, from wisteria. Uh, and bamboo, linden. Well, in southern, yeah, yeah, in in southern parts of Japan. Let's see. When did cotton seeds came around? I think, I think around the 17th century, maybe a little earlier. But it was only grown in some parts of Japan. So, yeah. and so, I, um, I told you. I did a lot of Google searching and it was a lot of fun because you know how you can go from one <laughs> rabbit hole to another and find things there. Are, um, and I, what I'd like to do is show you some photos of things which just struck me. Some of them are logs from people that I have followed 
and really love their work. Okay, so Sarah Sweat, um, a field guide to needlework. She stopped writing the blog a year, two years ago. Um, but the blog is still available online and you can search the archives and, and it's really worth it. It's she writes so well, and I really enjoy it. What's the scale of that piece? Is that a full it's, on? N it's a miniature. Okay. This is a miniature knit um, coffee filters. <laughs> um, and um, uh, yes, for you. Her apparently used coffee filters, and um, she had a couple of sources. Um, her, one of was her sister who collected things from um, coffee shops, uh -huh. uh, commercial places, so that the filters are much yeah. bigger yeah. Yeah, than uh, than what we have. But um, um, yeah, and then and uh -huh. then knit. And I don't know how well you can see the color. There's kind of color streaking, and that's coffee dyed. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and she also does uh, did um, uh, tapestry, and she did a whole series. And I think these were yeah, maybe three by four, I, something oh, wow. like that. A whole series of words. Uh, every one of them has an individual for their four silvage weavings. Yeah. And um, a four letter word on each one in different colors that she dyed um, of coffee filters. And, uh, wow. This one, this one, the blue may be, maybe wools. I'm not sure, but but mostly it's uh, variations of. Is the warp shifu also for poor selvage? Uh, no. Oh, no, good. The warp would, uh, <laughs> uh, that would be pushing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pushing it. But I love her work and. Um, her uh, pieces with the lettering and fire is one of my one of my pieces. I wanted to try that. Um, uh, this is woman Karen Trask. Um, oh, and I did. If there was a website, I tried to put it on, and I do have some um, uh, just these sources that I've used. Just. Um, ones that I enjoy. This is a, a dictionary, a French dictionary. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't it? Wow. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Woven and um, um, French gym dictionary, it's called. So uh, I love I love the things that she does. Um, a woman named Linnell Dickinson, who um, I think she, I read that she had to stop doing, she was doing in, really interesting things with Shifu and had to stop because of arthritis and she mm. just couldn't handle them anymore, which is too bad because her things are just gorgeous. What are those heavier textures? This is the, the weft in all of this is um, sewing paper thread. Mm. And these are slices of um the sewing paper unspun unspun in there yeah uh, here and there and uh -huh. the um and i think the the streaks are all from um uh markings on the pattern paper mm -hmm. um yeah i just uh it's it is i just thought that one was stunning mm -hmm. i love that one um yeah from uh, a woman from uh, Korea. And so these are, um, um, I think, I just was struck with the picture yeah. um, and there wasn't a whole lot of information on it, but um, most of the other things that I saw for her were twine. And there's a traditional um, uh, twining, uh, done in Korea and the the threads are um are often done in lengths and it's it's really treated more the paper is is cut into strips but it's a different treatment it's more like um 
working with a, a bark or an inner bark where you you twist, you essentially twist two oh. or pieces at a time and then and then roll them back and uh -huh. fly. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that is the traditional way to, to use paper and um, and I think hers are are done that way. But not sure. I just thought the image was just beautiful. Um, uh, um, this woman does um, weaving, does um, shifu spinning, and I believe with traditional Japanese paper, which uh, which has been beautifully and um, does like a small collection every year of um, wrapping cloths uh, that she sells. Uh, Velma Bollard, who does um, what uh, she calls country shifu, which is a little, um, maybe a little rougher and uses different different materials and uses it for a lot for books. Um, she's actually teaching at uh, next week uh, at um, Washi Arts um, in Washington. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you, and that these again, here's, here's what the, the lengths of um, uh, twisted paper uh, mm -hmm. look like, and she, and there's, these are twine. Uh, she's a paper maker. So, Barbara, are you... It occurs to me that it might help the strength of the paper if it got, if some substance were applied to it, like white glue, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, do you know of anybody doing that? Anything like that? Um, I I have read that um, there's, well, they usually call it cord making. Um, uh -huh. rather yeah. than finer, um, finer for shifu, um, that there's a, a substance made from like a starch or, mm -hmm. or another a different one from seaweed, which is put on. Mm -hmm. There's a tradition in Japan, and I don't know, I don't know the name of it. I don't have any photos of it, where paper, like you described the soap paper, paper is used not cut apart and spun but pieces and pieced together into oh. a garment and and there is there's a finish on that oh. i don't know it'd be interesting because i don't know how it would would it interfere with the the actual spinning of your yeah, you know, yeah. Of i don't your know paper? or even applied after like there's the um stencil paper from japan that has persimmon right on yeah. it um, to make it waterproof. Yeah, and and after you have, uh, I mean, I don't know why you couldn't tape your um, your spun paper and um, you know on the warping yeah. board size it or um, there might be. I don't know very much about like permanent sizing or what would uh, uh, what might work. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sakamachi is a jealous at the end of her baskets and things like that. Oh, yeah, if you need something rather stiffer, I just use white glue. Right. Yeah. 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 I might be wrong on this, but like, I don't know really about the technique for this, but can you uh, let us do yeah. Yeah. the starch? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the uh, person, the Kakushi. Right, Kakushi. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know of anybody who's doing it, but I believe in experimenting. There's an open door for you right here. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Along right. with all the others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jenny Perry, who is a, a braider. Um, these are, um, I'm, I'm not sure how you can, how much you can tell from where you're sitting, but they're, um, they are, paper and silk. So um, 
um, some layers are, are paper and some layers are silk. This one is all paper. Just to uh, view of this. Um, I'm trying to think what the, on a stand, what's the, I know Ma, I know Maro dies, which are the round ones, Taka die. Yeah, this one, these were done on Taka dies. Yeah, she's, she is beautiful, amazing thing. Um, Donna Crispin, who uh, is who I learned shifu from, and um, she is was a primarily a basket maker, and basket maker with traditional materials, um, and um, uh, added in some woven um, woven shifu. Um, uh, Tom Nisley, who <laughs> you know, writes for, well now, uh, handwoven and what notes from the bell. Um, so this is his paper towel. He decided to, <laughs> and, I, and I believe, uh, I've forgotten now if this was, if this is warp and weft paper, I've forgotten. You, oh, there's not too much. We'll move it up. There, there. So, move it up. No, I, um, I just he did about it earlier, but it, could you keep the volume of your voice up? Because I'm yeah. if I pick my hearing aid, if I put have oh. my hearing aids in, they get all tangled up. And, oh, yeah, the, yeah <laughs> mass with the glasses and hearing aids. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So he did learn. He wrote in um, one of the notes from the bell um, articles. He did learn to spin his own paper, but this is commercial paper that he bought, commercial sp spun paper um, to make his paper towels because I think he thought that he would never spin enough, <laughs> never <laughs> spin enough paper to actually do it. And um, I, so and that's kind of fun. And, um, um oh. she's um made her own paper and then this is maybe wo woven or or uh knitted knitted and then painted on but kind of fun um uh, so it was an interesting interesting piece of the board yeah so um shifu isn't isn't a weave structure. It isn't a method of weaving. It's a, a use of a specific material. And to get from paper to um, to thread or yarn, um, there's not too many steps. Uh, but it's all. I can tell you the mechanics, but there's a lot of artistry to it. If you get something a little too wet, it will fall apart. Not wet enough, and it might crumple and and tear. So it's this Can balance. Um, uh, not yet. Okay. Let me let me go through this, and then um, and then I'll show you the bits. Um, so these are um, these are papers that I've spun, and most of it. I think all of these are sewing paper patterns, which mm -hmm. amaze amazes me. I always thought sewing paper, okay, it's beige. You know, it's all beige. <laughs> well, it's not not all beige, and there's an awful lot of shades of beige out there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you can see. I even have some. I um, someone gave me some patterns, and there was this blue kind of a blue gray which oh. i haven't spun yet but um but it looks fun um cutting this is it opened up this is what it looks like when you cut it but but um uh the the top and bottom edges are still attached so um i i what i'll do is go through the slides and then i'll show you um in reality what they look like um, take a piece of paper, whatever it is, fold it in half so that the ends meet, fold the fold up so that it doesn't 
white, you have um, maybe an inch, uh, an inch or so of uh, um, above the fold. And traditionally, the the folded part is inside. Um, uh, with this, I'm usually using smaller pieces of paper, so I'll just fold it up. Uh, it's uh, just as easy. The Traditionally, the pieces of paper that are used are, oh, usually like, I think, I think the average is like 25 or so inches and 30 something or other. So you're doing these multiple folds up so that you can sit and easily work. Um, with smaller pieces, you know, I wouldn't even have to fold up that much if I wanted. All you need to do is to be able to cut it so that when it's opened up, it's attached on both ends, mm -hmm. but all sliced in the middle. And um, um, that's the start. I mostly uh, have used scissors and I don't mark. You can mark um, so that you have nice, even cuts. <laughs> okay, uh, but... Um, uh, okay, you don't have to. Approximately how wide? Um, quarter or an inch mm -hmm. half inch? Mm -hmm. This is about oh, a little over a quarter of an inch. That's the usual mm -hmm. usual size I have. Uh, the sewing paper is so light and crushable that um, uh, you don't really need to do a really fine to get a very fine thread. Mm -hmm. um, most of mine is is about three eighths of an inch, something like that. It's that's approximate, and if some are a little larger and some are a little smaller, um, at first I thought, oh yeah, you can make your thread go be fatter and thinner, but um, uh, I haven't done it enough to have that show. Uh, I have to say, um, and then when you got it in this shape. There are two ways to treat the paper, and it can I can tell you both of them, but what you do with the paper depends on what the paper is and what it will allow. Everything is um, what that paper essentially asks you to do with it. Mm -hmm. One way, which is the traditional way, and with good Japanese paper, this is what you can do. You slightly dampen uh, a cloth. You lay your paper, which is cut out in that in, um, in that form, and wrap it up. And <laughs> if you were doing a stack of like this many, you would leave it wrapped up overnight. Um, with the sewing tissue, I found that you know I can do this ten or fifteen minutes, and that's enough for to if I especially if I have only one one sheet, um, which dampens it, and then. Um, then you gather it, and this is when you roll it. Oh, and I don't have a picture of this, but there, there are pictures in the book. You, you hold your paper together, and you roll it very carefully, starting yeah. very carefully on a cement block. Or if you're me and you have a smaller one, you hold it on your, your thigh, and you just, and you just roll it. You're rolling you're rolling this whole thing. You open it out, you squish it back together, you roll some more. And the individual um, yeah. uh, cut strands can start to kind of roll up a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're using nice Japanese paper, it's almost as though you had spun it. You're, mm -hmm. you're spinning on the spinning wheel is actually um, gives it a really nice twist. So the uh, photo in the middle of the bottom, that's what you are rolling in the towels? That's, yeah. oh, oh well, then, you're rolling in the towels, you're, you have it out flat. Okay, and it turns and, into that. Well, it comes out flat, and then you squish it together, and then you roll that whole bundle. Here, without yeah. the towel. Even the inside of, uh, say, the inside, you really like, picture, even the inside strands are also just... No, um, even though they're, you know, yeah, they're that's like that's that. what happens when you take this oh, yeah. and you roll it, yeah. you know, the whole bundle. 
Yeah. Yes, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. The you can go through the same steps and get to here. Um, okay, so and do it damp. Mm -hmm. Damp is one of those mm -hmm. words that you have to mm -hmm. use your judgment. <laughs> and and as you work, um, it'll get drier. You can add a little wet on paper, which is very fragile, which doesn't like water, like sewing paper. You can also um, get it cut, scrunch up your whole bundle, and then by hand, crumple it wow. and crumple it and open it up and refold it and crumple mm -hmm. and crumple by <laughs> hand. And what you're doing is softening it. Yeah. And then, and it won't get white as um, rolled as this, but all softened and uh, and then you can go with the next steps and spin it. Um, once uh, once it's softened, and you can see this is not this is not rolled as, as much. Then two two strands are or are torn off at a time, and two strands and two strands all the way across, and um, when you tear off two, you have a the turn. And that's that's the weakest part uh, when you go to spin um, because you're you're essentially turning it like this. And so what you do is hold it out like that and just kind of twist or free spin that little ear or whatever you call it. And so you go from this. Uh, here's another loop where where it's fun. Um, just that just that corner. And if you do those nicely, you can take <laughs> yeah, you can take this whole when it's all taken apart, you can take that whole bunch to your spinning wheel and actually spin it on the spinning wheel, which Janice is much faster. <laughs> than, <laughs> yeah. But I've never used the spinning wheel. Yeah, well then <laughs> But so Bob and Winder. Bob and Winder. Yeah. So the essentially you're detaching, you're detaching at both ends. And you do have to pay attention that you don't detach the same two up here as down here, because then you'll have a bunch of loops, which I have done. Um, but so you want one continuous yeah, strand, one continuous length. Um, Sarah Sweat um, does or did um, um, coffee filters, and rather than rather than um, cut them back and forth, um, she devised a way to fold them in half and cut, but you cut not quite through on this side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you open it out, uh, it's uh, one big spiral. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and you start at the outside and detach one, and as you go uh, right. toward the middle, you detach one at a time, and then you have one big, long, um, kind of spiral loop, but uh, mm -hmm. especially toward the end, uh, coffee filter. Um, I haven't spun too much coffee filter. I know one of her blogs she talks a little bit about spinning it um, slightly damp. Um, coffee filters are a little stronger than tissue mm -hmm. because they're made to be damp. Uh, um, and so that's something I haven't explored very much, but why not save your coffee filters? Mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Yeah, just for fun. Um, okay, so um, I, when I started doing this, I really liked the... Um, the yarn, the thread that is produced by Tommy Eagle. I like the feel of it. I like the look of it with the little spots of mostly black. I actually mm -hmm. came across a, a bunch of patterns that had blue, beautiful bright blue markings, mm -hmm. but um, they, they're all gone. I don't have any more of those and I haven't <laughs> seen blue again. Um, and I 
use mine um, as single. So it's overspun, it twists back on itself, and it has uh, a lot of a lot of life to it. Um, so I love the I love the colors and I love the feel of it. And um, it also the pattern paper um, connects me to growing up. Uh, we sewed at my house. We had one sewing machine. Oh, thank you. Um, we had one sewing machine, and my mother and sister and I all sewed. And basically, you learned to do things out of order because you pinned everything you could. And when the sewing machine was free, you went over, changed the thread and the bobbin, did every bit of sewing you could. And as soon as you left to go use the the ironing board or whatever, somebody else <laughs> came up and switched the switched all the threads. So um so I grew up sewing and um and I just love the idea of recycling old um old sewing patterns and um and I love the the look of it. I haven't tried I haven't tried um plying because I haven't tried plying. I haven't got there. Um, but I love the colors. I love the um, the variations in colors. Mm -hmm. This is natural, naturally that yellow. I have um, dyed with indigo, and um, in the in the yarn form, not in mm -hmm. the paper. And what I've done, the solution for um, putting this uh, this yarn into water uh, is for me to make a, a very, very strong indigo pot. And what I, I have, um, John Marshall's um, mm -hmm. instant indigo. Mm -hmm. And I can make a very, very strong pot so that I can make a little skein, essentially dip it in, flip it around and take it out. And that's it and get the blue. Mm -hmm. um, um, if you, the Japanese, paper, the good paper, is set after uh, because you don't want the the over twist and um, which is you have to be kind of funky to play with. Um, so sometimes the whole bobbins, um, maybe bamboo bot a little um, um, what's the name for what you put on the on your bobbin shaft. The bobbin. Um, a bobbin. A quill. A quill. A quill. A quill. A quill. Um, a little bamboo quill. The whole quill can be just dropped into boiling water for, uh, I think that one's 30 seconds, or you can, um, and, and the fabric is washable. Okay, well, I'm not dropping this into boiling water because I know what happened <laughs> to it. Indigo, yes, that, that works great. Um, um, so I started spinning some, I didn't have a huge supply and looking at it and thinking, okay, I want to use this somehow. What, how can I use it? How can I use it in its overspun form? And, uh, what, what works? Um, I tried a little bit of, um, weaving. I didn't like the way way it was working at that time. I tried to do, uh, excuse me, a little knitting, but with overspun and, and it's it's catchy. It catches yes. on each other. So I didn't like that. And I tend to put things out and look at them. Okay, a material, it's, it's mm -hmm. out and I'll look at it and I'll laugh on it and I'll look at it again and I'll think about an idea. And um, I had started doing Harakumi which for braiders, if you know, is a Japanese braiding technique. Um, there's even a karakumi stand you can get. Well, my braiding history is with Andean braids and you do things in the hand or attached to something and very little tension. So I, rather than a karakumi stand, I just do it in what I refer to as the the uh, Andean tradition or uh, of literally just pinning your threads to a board and you, um, 
you don't need very much tension in there. And um, <clears throat> Harakumi is actually a twining. And twining works, this thread works very, very well with twining. Um, and so I decided to experiment and see what I could do with, um, with paper and with this particular paper. So, um, so this is the first group that I did. Um, sewing baskets is what I call them. Uh, um, uh, they're all uh, karakumi and you know what however however I could work it start at the bottom and then put a something inside to hold it uh, um, a little indigo dye and um, and um, thinking well, what do I do at the top uh, I often start a project and don't know <laughs> what all the steps are going to be uh, but um, so when I got to the top, uh, I thought, oh, okay, I'll, uh, I think of it as unfurling. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll untwist the ends and just give it a, a nice, uh, um, a nice little furry end, uh, which is what I've done. Um, when, um, if you do braiding, you know, you have to have enough to hold on to, and I didn't know how long these were going to be or what I was going to do. So the pieces that I cut off when I finished this, as far as I wanted, my thrums, uh -huh. okay. Uh, and these are thrums from several different projects, lengths of it. And again, I set them out. It took too long to make that stuff. You don't throw, <laughs> them, throw the ends out. So, so I set it on the shelf and I walked by it and I looked at it and I think, eh, Okay, should be something. And I walk by and look at it again and think and um, try different things. And the idea came to me to do uh, what I call a book of thrums. <laughs> so these are my these are my my thrums. Uh, essentially, I tied two together and unfurled the edges, and then uh, I tapestry wove the front and back. And I have that one here. Um, so it was it was fun for me. I, I haven't done too much tapestry, so um, and a paper bead or two because why not? Why not? And so there's the the insides. Um, just two rows of twining together. And um, my book of thrums. <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun. So that was my that uh, the the insides were were all pieces like this, um, and the outside was more um, uh, other pieces. Um, and I really like I really I like doing the karakum. I love I love twining. I just love the the feel of it, and the, it works so well with paper yarns. So this project, which um, I finished about a a month ago, and then worked on the ends. Um, when I when I sit and work, uh, I often have uh, music on, and I heard a um um um. A Celtic song um, called uh, called the Orangedale Station, but it's about a a, um, a train station actually in Canada, which has been closed. Oh. Progress. Um, and mm -hmm. as I was working on this, I thought um, it's the uh, it's changing. Things are threads are moving along here and finishing, moving along here and finishing, and um, so the words that stuck with me were the winds of change forever blow. Some things stay and some things go. And mm -hmm. it related to this song. It related to what I was doing. It related to <laughs> COVID. I've been working on this for a couple of years with, with breaks here and there. That things are disappearing. That stores that we know are gone because of COVID. And 
um, life's really changing. So uh, the, that phrase stuck with me. Some things, mm -hmm. the winds of change forever blow. Some things stay and some things go. Uh, and I use, um, I probably, maybe 75% of this is um, the paper, hand spun sewing paper. But I've also went back into my little supply and said, oh, what do I have that's interesting that has a little integrity to it, that, that has a life of its own? So there's also uh, from Hagu, I believe, uh, something called pine paper. Uh, there's a skein of, I have a skein of uh, hand-tied hand abaca, uh, which is the when you see this one up close, you'll you can see areas where it's um, it's kind of lacy, and um, that's the abaca. There's some um, indigo dye uh, nettle from uh, uh, Nepal. Um, yeah, go ahead. And, yeah, and um, so it's almost all. I did tea dye some of the pine paper just to take away the white, mm -hmm. uh, the bright white, but mostly it is uh, indigo and then natural colors, mm -hmm. the natural colors of the of the paper. And, um, uh, and, and I'll give you a peek at what I'm doing next. It's a continuation of my thrums <laughs> and it will be a, um, in the, a book kind of, I guess you could call it a book in the, form of a scroll about six inches high uh, and on the outside of the scroll you'll see just a um, there'll be a blue line which runs the length of it on the inside will be words and I've just started so it, it'll be the lineage of my thrums uh -huh. uh, thrums from um, from the uh, baskets the baskets from tissue paper, the tissue paper from a tree. Okay. Um, so, so it's it's in progress. And I actually am using a loom here, uh, using the reed for spacing and rolling up on the other side, but not uh, not heavies. Like it's it's all it is all um, picky. So the the fun thing for me on this project was. How do I have the words show on the inside, but on the outside, uh -huh. you, you don't see it. Because again, relating to um, family and also relating to COVID. Um, I lived on Sea Ranch and during the whole pandemic, we, we could always just go out walking, but you'd meet people, everybody'd have their mask on or put their mask on early on. and um, and you'd see somebody coming up the bluff and say, who is that? Can I tell <laughs> what they're wearing? Or, oh yes, that's that's Solo, their dog. I know who that is. You know? And and it just it resonated with me that we really don't, we see on the surface what we present, but who we are, who your lineage is, where you're from, what kind of family you live, it's all inside and you don't see it. So this is my uh, my version of that. So how are you getting, how, how are you doing that? that? Yeah. How am I accomplishing that? The, um, not in the it is, um, I have a double, double work. Oh. Everyone is double. And wherever I'm doing <coughs> um, a thread, I just, I just pull up um, uh, one of the two oh. and yeah. weave, weave in that but the other um the other one from that pair is weaving in plain weave in the back many harnesses do you use oh no harnesses <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah no no harnesses that's my favorite kind of weaving so it, it is, i did use i did put them through the reed because it helps um it helps me keep it uh in line but um but otherwise and and just because you want to have something a little more, uh, there's always a challenge. Um, I really want, if it were a warp-based piece, I would have done 
uh, slightly heavier warps at the side and maybe a slightly different color just to just to set off the edge. So it's wet face. And I didn't like doing you know, I tried different things. I tried a little card woven edge, but I didn't like the the coordination with the uh, tapestry. So what I'm doing is a little rolled edge on either side. And I'm not rolled, um, a little um, um, tubular edge on either side. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so we'll see how that works. <laughs> it's all it's all an adventure. So that's <laughs> um, that's as far as I've gotten with. Um, we can turn this turn this off and on. Um, so if I close this, Suzanne, you think it'll just, it just we'll just get the TV back or something. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so. These are the different, the different, um, the different <clears throat> stages. My paper folded up. Okay, that's four layers. Um, here's the same thing, and I've started to cut. Okay, and cut up through the fold. Mm -hmm. um, I actually started. Rather than fold this to the inside, I just put it on the outside because then I can easily see it. So I can see where I need to cut to. Okay, so uh, um, yeah, here is one which has been cut, but you can see it's all all connected and and crinkly and stiff. Not well, not stiff, but. Crunchy. Paper. Yeah, yeah, it's paper. Uh, and same paper, hand, hand scrunch, all scrunch and crumpled, and then rolled. And, uh, you know, this is what I would do. Um, usually, I, I'm wearing my old jeans, and I find it works to, to stand next to the sink. <laughs> run the water a little bit put my hand on the on the water in the sink not wet 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 but just and then get my side just to just damp because then when you roll rather than push back and forth it actually rolls and and I would just you know like this and roll and roll and roll and un, undo it and roll this is a happens to be an exceptionally long one. I I have found that with the pattern paper, it it doesn't necessarily pay to have a really long piece because um, you're really liable to to break it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not only the paper might break, but actually it's easy to get your get your mm. finger in and have it break. So so um, um, shorter ones. Um, uh, and this is a little bit that I actually very carefully laid my laid uh, on a slightly damp towel. I think I left it for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then did the same rolling, but very, it was very slightly damp. And you can see that it, mm -hmm. it has rolled more. And I have started on one side, okay, this side. Oh, yeah. I've detached yeah. and given the um, the little Bend. bits that's yeah. that stick up. <clears throat> give them a just a little twist. And when I when I learned to do this, okay, I took my bobbin winder and I have a little metal one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it only turns in one direction. Right. It doesn't go back. So. When I started spinning and doing these, I was spinning in the S uh, an S twist because that's the way it turned. And for some reason, I just continue to do S twist, yeah. um, even on the spinning wheel. So when when I detach two and I give it a little twist to just just right there, I'm 
doing that in an, so that when I spin in an S direction, it will already be, be spun correctly. So that's, that is, if you're going to spin Z, then you need to do yeah. your little twists that way. So this one is, this one is partly detached, ready for the rest. And you can see that if I took this loop and detached two up here at the top, I would have a mm -hmm. continuous loop. Right. So, so I would detach one and then two offset. Right? It's just a matter of watching. Yeah. So I'm spinning the threads. Um, yeah, I'm copy filters. Um, and you, you'll be able to come up and look. Um, um, we started one of these in in our class with different um, different papers. And what I've done is tried to do for a lot of things, um, do it a dry crumpled dry crumpled um, pre-spinning and and if I can a little wet pre-spinning and see if there's a difference. Some things didn't handle well. Um, I mean the the some of the um, Oh, Coal Valley, which is in San Francisco, Coal Valley hardware. Um, they used to do a newsletter that you actually got in the mail. And I don't think I could do more than this and it would break. And more than this and it would break. Terrible. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and, so what it is, and I've also found that sometimes, um, sometimes I'll try one way and think, oh no, no, this is uh this is not working. But if I do it again, maybe it will actually be better. Uh, I don't know if it's just more patience at some time. That day. Yeah, mm -hmm. that day. Yeah. Um, I brought um, a number of books which have um, have examples that of um, using paper threads, which are interesting. The the kind of what I would call the the most informative and best book is um, is Susan Bird, um, 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 which is like a complete guide to how to do this, who else is doing it, what what might be traditional. I mean, this has just got. This has got everything in it. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Um, if you are interested, and in the back, in the back, oh. <laughs> there is, and this is incredible. You can see. Here we go. An example. Of paper mm -hmm. that was made specifically for Shifu and hand woven paper. I mean these are incredible. I'll leave them in the in the little envelope. But you can you can come up and take them out if you want to, but I, I think they'll just get lost if I leave mm -hmm. them out on the paper. But uh, I mean wow. this this is just mm -hmm. incredible, incredible stuff. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, and the other, most of the other books have examples of things which um, uh, of uh, clothing, mostly clothing, uh, hmm. and um, and also then a little a little one of, from Ami Lee uh, on. Um, uh, Korean dealing with the Korean uh, uh, hanji paper and uh, making the, the cords. So, um, it's a lot of fun. I I just. I'm not done with it, but I'm not sure what's coming next. Uh, but um, but I really enjoy it. Thank you. Do you have any questions?